Hello YouTube, what is good? We are back with the orc tier list for heavy support units. In this video we're going to cover all of the heavy support units from battle wagons to all of the forge wheel units. Now keep in mind this is for match play so it's going to be for grand tournament 2021 now. So we're not going to be going over any of the Legends unit. We're just going to be going over all of the tournament legal units. So how I'm going to be ranking all of these units here is... Number one is in relation to each other. The gold standard is going to be the first unit that I talk about. And we're going to basically relate all these units to the mech gun. Because the mech gun is the top choice right now. Number two is what role they fulfill in the current meta of competitive play. That means are they able to help with objective scoring? And third and might be one of the more important things when it comes to heavy support is how well can it deal with threats and how durable is it? So really, we're going to be looking at the units in terms of their point value, how well they do in objectives, and also how killy they are and how durable they are. The orcs have an abundance of heavy support options. And I actually think that the orc heavies are very close to each other in the A, B, C, and the D tier. They're actually very close. It's that there's just one or two standout S tier units that have been really dominating the meta. I think in non-competitive play, all of the orc heavy support are pretty viable. And even in competitive play, we've seen a whole mismatch of different heavy support units be viable. So let's get started first of all with uh, what I believe is the pinnacle of orc heavy support which is the smash gun. Now the smash gun I believe is this one. The mech gun smash gun is everything and anything that you would want in a heavy support. It is number one super cheap so you can have a lot of them. Number two it has a unique hitting mechanic that makes it pretty damn reliable and number three that I say it's cheap because it's very cheap for what it does so why the smash gun is so good is that it has for the point cost it has a lot of wounds it has a great gun and because it's a Gretchen it's hitting on four plus so you've got a reliable cheap long-range heavy support unit another role that the smash a gun performs very well well at is holding the backfield objectives because in typically in orc armies you have the bulk of your army wanting to move up and getting into the fighting range and being able to fight things close up so that can often you know make you vulnerable in the back line to deep strike and just having those backfield objectives sneakily stolen by your opponent but if you got a bunch of smash a guns in your back line then that's not a problem because a it's gonna be very hard for your opponent to approach your back line without getting smash a gun to death and b because they're so cheap one costing 40 points you can have a couple of these and you can basically screen out your enemy's movements in the back lines so for those reasons smash a guns number one being very good for their stat line four plus to hit their wounding mechanic is that you roll 2d6 and if it's greater than the toughness it wounds which is actually extremely reliable and the fact that it's a decent sized unit that can screen out enemy movements makes it very S tier it's used very often in the top orc list you seldom actually see orc list skip the smash gun they're just beloved by all of the orc players and what can I say they're the best. Let's actually go on to the extreme opposite, which is the worst version of the mech gun, which is the bubble chucka. Now, the bubble chucka is not much of an improvement over the smash gun. It's actually a worse version of the smash gun with having D6 damage and the only improvement being that it has D6 armor penetration, which is not extremely, extremely necessary because over a 3 plus armor penetration you're not gonna see much of a return on that and the fact that you're just getting a worse version of the mech gun smash a gun at a higher point cost really doesn't make any sense this is why you would never see bubble chuckas in 
competitive play, and I seldom even see them in casual lists. They're just such an underwhelming unit. The idea of it is super cool, just like a super random high variance orc unit, but the stat line is just a lot worse. If this was actually cheaper than the Smasher Gun, it might be something that we see played from time to time, but in their current state, it is just so bad. And just from a points-wise perspective, it's literally the worst option you could have for all of the heavy supports. For those reasons, this is strongly a D. Moving on to the Tractor. The Tractor has actually seen more and more competitive play recently, so I will put the Mech Gun Tractor cannon as a A. One of the unique things about the tractor is that it actually auto hits and uh, it actually can break fly units so it makes fly vehicles explode which in the current meta with so many Drukari taking raiders and raiders being so damn good this is seeing more play and I've seen a lot of orc lists take one two or three of these in their list to deal with that current state of the meta with a lot of these raiders. Points wise, they're just a little bit more expensive than the Smasher Guns at 10 points more. So for the auto hitting, I think someone did a, an analysis and stat wise, like points for points in terms of killing potential, they're very similar. So we're seeing a lot more people take the tractor cannons or tractor guns. It'll be very interesting to see as Drukari gets weaker, I feel like this will be less relevant, but who knows. As of now, it's still a decent choice, and it's being run quite a fair bit in competitive lists. Moving on to the Custom Mega Blaster. This has also seen some play. I personally don't feel like it's as strong as the Tractor Cannon, just because of how much more points it costs. And... It's almost double the cost of a mech gun. I believe this is 65 points as opposed to the mech gun's 40 points. And for that reason, I think you would rather have more mech guns. Just because with more mech guns, you have more space to screen out enemies' deep strikes. And also screen enemy movements. And I think that's one of the key roles that mech guns service. And also the fact that instead of having 6 wounds, you can have... 12 wounds because having two mech guns gives you more wounds obviously than having one mech gun. That being said, uh, I do think custom mega cannons are still viable. So even though it's in a B tier, I wouldn't say that this is a horrible unit. And this is definitely a unit that we still see in some, I've seen this recently in some winning competitive lists. So it's not something that I would write off, but overall in the competitive scene, we see much more smashing guns. We see much more tractors than we see the custom mega cannons. For that reason, I put the custom mega cannon at the B tier. Alright, moving away from the mech gun family of things, let's uh, take a brief trip into the infantry. Now, let's start off with the flash kits. The flash kits, I would put as a C. And I just want to give a shout out to Rich Kilton and also... The most friendly user on Reddit, Brutal But Cunning, for helping me out to take some time out of their day to help develop this list. Flash kits, point wise, are not atrocious. I think one of the things that they suffer from is the fact that two of them cost as much as a smasher gun. And they do feel very expensive. Now, strength, I believe there's strength seven guns, and that is a little less than you would want. I think strength 8 is really that sweet point. Yes, smasher guns are technically strength 7 if you consider that 2d6 average roll is a 7. But the problem with flash kits is that they're heavy, so if you're going to be moving them around a lot, you're going to be have a trouble shooting at things. And at 20 points, they are still squishy since they are basically the same stat line as regular boys. And that one wound a piece, you're just going to be shooting them off the board with very little trouble at all. One advantage that they may have is taking advantage of the Squigoff's Howda, which I'll get into later. But I think that just these three guns in general have a lot more utility than flash kits. They're just a little too expensive 
for being competitive and we don't see them at all in competitive play so for those reasons I'm putting them at a C. Now Ludas were something that we saw very very commonly in competitive play. I would actually put this somewhere between a B and a C. They got nerfed heavily. They got a lot of their points increased. Uh, the patrol nerf, making patrol detachment cost points, was actually a huge nerf to Ludas also indirectly. The fact that you have to sink in so much command points for them to be efficient as well is something that you could see as a downside. You usually want to run these as bad moons and then give them the shoot twice, the more DACA, and you spend a command point to get that juicy juicy three hits so that you have a bunch of Ludas just brapping things off the table. In the early 9th edition, sorry, the, not the 9th edition, but early 8th edition, these things were a huge threat and uh, people were very scared of Ludas. But at the moment, they're a bit expensive and just the amount of indirect nerfs and direct nerfs that Ludas receive, I would put them at a C tier. I would put them a bit above Flash Kits. They're just too much of a CP sink and just too expensive to be competitive in their current state. Now let's move on to the Battle Wagon family. Battle Wagons have always seen a good amount of usage in competitive play. Let's just start off with the plain vanilla Battle Wagon. And I would give the Battle Wagon in between an A and a B. I'm going to go ahead and give it an A. Now, the reason why I would weight this between an A and a B is just the fact, again, there's a lot of units out there that are doing D3 plus 3 damage. Just so many things are doing so much damage. So the Battle Wagon is not as durable as it once was. It is beneficial in that you can hold a lot of boys in there. You can hold 20 boys. And you can give it a range of options in terms of its guns. And it's very customizable. However, I feel that most players just often give it the hard case so it gets the plus one toughness and give it the roller so it basically acts as a super cheap bone breaker and use it to deliver mega knobs or some sort of threat to the front line there's not many lists or competitive builds i've seen where the battle wagon is souped up with a lot of guns again i think the main issue is just that the mech guns outshine a lot of the shooting capabilities of the battle wagon and even though the battle wagon is a lot tougher in terms of points to reward, I think the mech gun, it just in a pure shooting standpoint, does a lot better. Now the battle wagon, again, has a lot of utility because it's able to hold inventory and deliver them to the front line. That's why I believe the battle wagon has a strength, and I put it in the A tier. Now the bone breaker, I would again put it between A and the B. I'm going to put this as a B. A lot of players tend to, in the competitive scene, take the Bone Breaker over the Battle Wagon. I mean, it's 50 extra points for getting D6 attacks on the charge. Me, personally, I don't know. Maybe they have some advanced Math Hammer that I'm not... I don't know about. But I feel like it's not really worth it. You would rather save those 50 points and spend it on something else. Especially when all those 50 points are doing is giving you T D6 attacks on the charge, not even an, an innate D6. It's just D6 on the charge only. So for that reason, I put the Bone Breaker at a B. Bone Breaker otherwise is very similar to the Battle Wagon. It's basically a Battle Wagon with the hard case built into it. Its melee is pretty disgusting given its strength 8, and now you have like 12 attacks at strength 8. That's pretty gross. That's a lot of crushing and crumping so bone breakers we see them a lot in competitive i wouldn't say a lot as in it's like boys a lot but we see them a decent amount i've seen them in probably one out of four lists that have performed pretty well that have any variation of heavy support that's not a mech gun so for those reasons i would put the bone breaker as a b just because i feel like the regular battle wagon with the hard case and the roller is cheaper but a more effective than the bone breaker now we got the gun wagon the gun wagon I would put as a C now let me tell you why the gun wagon has the issue of just almost having two mixed roles so on one hand you want this thing because it can carry troops to have troops inside and move up a bit but on the other hand 
This is really just going to sit in your back line and shoot at things. And once again, when we're considering heavy support units that are shooting, we're always going to make that comparison to the mech gun. And in terms of pure point-for-point -point shooting, the gun wagon is vastly inferior to the mech gun. Mech gun has that 4-plus shooting. The gun wagon, unfortunately, only has 5-plus. Now, one thing to take note of, though, is that the gun wagon can have the boomer and it has periscope so periscope allows this thing to actually shoot twice if it hasn't moved but if you just do the math hammer it the gun wagon is still inferior to mech gun in terms of shooting output if you're just looking at a point basis now but again the gun wagon does have the functionality where you could carry troops and it's a lot sturdier than the mech gun but there you got that split roll once again. Do you want to put the gun wagon forward? Do you want the gun wagon forward? Do you want to stay back and shoot? I think ultimately if you want a support vehicle that you can get into the front lines, you want either a battle wagon or a bone breaker. And if you want support units that can just blast at things, you want the mech gun or some of the other options I'm going to get into very shortly. Now, the cannon wagon on the other hand is extremely strong i'm gonna put this in the a tier above the custom mega cannon and the battle wagon the cannon wagon gets a weird rule where it gets four plus to hit on its cannons and uh, it's a pretty strong cannon it's a super cannon 60 inch range so super long 2d6 attacks and it has a good strength eight strength another place where this thing shines is that it's got a lot of movement 12 inches and also the fact that it's just hitting on 4 plus just makes it so strong. It's like a mech it's like having a bunch of mech guns on wheels. One of the drawbacks like I stated in this current meta there's a lot of things that do a high amount of damage, but this gun is long enough that you can put it pretty far back and just let it brap at things and it'll be pretty safe. Most of the games where I've used cannon wagons I'm not really afraid of them exploding or dying. They're seldom targeted because a lot of the boys and the frontline units that I may have like Megatrax, Scrap Jets, will take the bulk of the fire. So the cannon wagon is typically pretty safe. Especially with that 60 inch range. Makes it hard for the enemy to uh, try to hide anything or be too sneaky because 60 inches is kind of hard to hide your units from 60 inches. One interesting thing is that the cannon wagon can actually load infantry. That I've used a couple of times, but it really it's not going to be its primary function. The cannon wagon's primary function is really just to sit back and shoot at things, and it does a really good job at doing that. All right, moving on to the half track. The half track I will put at a D. I feel like this suffers from just being just being too ambiguous. It doesn't really have a strong role in the orc army right now. It is a cheaper way of getting the super cannon, but the f problem is that it doesn't get the plus to the weapon skill like the the cannon wagon does, and that's a big part of the cannon wagon strength. So the uh, big track is less reliable in shooting, and it's also more squishy. For those reasons, you would much rather have a battle wagon, cannon wagon, hell, even a gun wagon as opposed to having the big track. Yeah, the big track is cheaper in points, but when you're having a unit that's so much more squishy, I think in this rare case, you would rather actually spend the points to have a stronger unit than have the big track, which is strange because orcs are usually an army that benefits from redundancy. That's why mech guns are so strong. But in the specific case of the big track, I do believe that you're better off fielding the other heavy support options. All right, now let's jump into the the walkers, which I think are super cool, fun part of the army. Killer cans, I would put between a C and a D. I personally really like killer cans as a unit, and I've actually had some success. I was experimenting with a list that was half grot mobs and half Goff orcs with Gasgall, and it actually did pretty well. Killer cans with orcomatic pistons are a very reliable way to contest objectives. They're super fast. They're fairly durable. Yes, their leadership is slow, so you're gonna find that oftentimes they're running, but they're 
actually harder to kill than I thought and than my opponent thought. So oftentimes they're just not putting enough firepower into the killer cans. And the killer cans are a huge nuisance for the enemy. Not only that, their big shooters are actually quite reliable given the fact that they're shooting on 4+. plus. So they're a very good anti-chaff option. I've had some decent games running killer cans. Let me actually put this at the front of the C-class. I've run in killer cans with just the naked, you know, big shooter and the claw. And then you just have them have orchomatic pistons. Just run around the sides of the maps and just bothering weak objectives that your enemy is holding. Turn 2, you can easily get up right up there to the enemy's uh, objective. Start trying to clear the chaff off their objective and try to steal those objectives for those turn 3 and 4s. And because... Most people don't really see killer cans as a huge threat. Again, they're not going to dedicate that much firepower to killer cans. The downside is that they are very expensive and they don't benefit from any of the clan cultures except the grob mobs. Hopefully, we can see killer cans become a more integrated part of the orc army in the new codex. For those reasons, I put them at the C class. I think they are playable, but at the very top competitive levels, I think there are many options that are much better which I'll go into right now, which is the Death Dread. The Death Dread I would put in the A tier, like the very front of the A tier. The Death Dread definitely earlier in this year especially it was just ripping everything up. It had the three custom Mega Blasta and the Dread Claw loadout was doing super well. People would just put two or three of these into a Teleporta. And turn two, turn three, they just drop them down, and now you got a bunch of pretty much assassin units. So it's just brapping with their custom mega blasters and being able to wipe out key units that your opponent has. And because me, because they're coming out of deep strike, they're gonna be fairly healthy when they pop out, and they'll probably stick around for a turn or two. Now, one bad thing about Death Dress is that they're not as durable as they seem. Again, in this meta, there's a lot of stuff that can shoot them off the table pretty easily. So Death Dreads are really going to last maybe one turn, two turns if you're lucky. But getting them out of their teleporters and just getting them to shoot at things that you need to be cleared is so satisfying. And custom Mega Blasters are so good, especially with the Death Skulls clan. They are just a fierce, fierce, fierce unit for your opponent to deal with. Giving them that sweet sweet plus one to the ballistic skill as well custom mega blasters at four plus death shreds definitely a tier unit don't forget you can also use ramming speed on the death dreads so that gives you a at least one of your death dreads a very reliable charge threat because now you can ramming speed it now maybe you can use it to contest an objective or just be a headache for your enemy so the mecha dread i will put in the Mecha trick. I would put somewhere between a B and a C. I'm going to put in a B. The reason why I put it in a B is because we haven't seen the Mecha Dread played too much. One of the things that separates the Mecha Dread from the Mega Dread is that it does not have the boosted charge, but it does have the ability to repair vehicles. However, I don't think you're going to really be wanting this thing to repair vehicles that many times. You're probably going to be running Dreads to be very shooty, or very killy, like we see the use of the Death Dread in competitive play. So in terms of how you use your points, I think you would way rather have Death Dreads, you know, cannon wagons, mech guns, than sinking your points into the mech dread, because I don't think that the fixing vehicles things really justifies having the mecha dread. And while its guns are decent, it's still orc shooting, so there's a lot of other shooty vehicles that have their ways around that such as sparkly bits on death dreads the cannon wagons innate 4 plus or the mech guns innate 4 plus or gun wagons that have additional ability to shoot twice with periscope now the reason i'm putting it into b is because its points cost is decent enough where i think i don't know it's because just this is just pure theory craft but just its stat line is very decent for its points value so Perhaps in the future, as we see the meta evolve some more, we may see some more Mega Dreads come into play. Something very interesting is the Mega Dread, which saw basically little to no play earlier this year, and now is 
coming up as a sleeper hit where to the point I'm putting this as an S tier above the Death Dread. And let me say why. The Death Dread's role was essentially an assassin. It would come into the field and just brap at things turn 2 and 3 that were a big threat because custom Mega Blast says with D6 damage and you being able to roll that D6, re-roll that D6 damage, these things could really blow things up. The Mega Dread has now actually taken over that role and I think there's two main reasons. Number one, the Mega Dread has that boosted charge like I said. So with Mega Dread you get to roll three dice and discard one of the dice. Couple that with, here we go, couple that with the ramming speed and you've got a seriously consistent deep strike charge threat. This thing is going to be making that deep strike charge like 70 like 70% of the time. It's ridiculous. It's always going to it's pretty much always making it if you spend the CP on it. Also, given the fact that this its claws have D3 plus 3 damage, which is becoming extremely relevant in this meta, I think is a huge boost to the Mega Dread. The other reason why I think people are picking the Mega Dread over the multiple Death Dreads and the Teleporter nowadays is also the fact that it can sometimes be a headache to plop down two or three Death Dreads on the field. A lot of the competitive players especially are very good at screening for Deep Strike. So there was problems with that too. Sometimes you just have to put your Death Dreads near your own deployment, which is not really what you want to do. Whereas the Mega Dread because it's just one model in a teleporter, it's easier to plop down and have it charge at things. So with the recent rise of use in the Mega Dread, I will put the Mega Dread firmly as an S tier unit. The Big Squig, I'm really torn because I really like the model. I would put between a C and a D. Just because I like the model so much, I'm going to put it in the C. Squig Offs overall are a cool unit. They have decent melee, decent shooting, but I think they're just a little too expensive in their point cost. They do have a funky rule, which is interesting, which is how to. So that means that units inside of it don't count as being moved, which is very different from the other transport units. However, the only unit that really benefits from that is flash kits. And if you're going to put a bunch of flash kits inside your squig, now you're investing a lot of points into... Uh, part of your army that's really not going to be dedicated at holding objectives. It's not really all that durable. You're just kind of using it as a, glun as a gun platform. And like I said before, in terms of blasty things and things that are killy, the orcs have a great selection up here. And even the battle wagon as a transport, I think, is far more superior than the squig off. For those reasons, I would put the squig off in the C tier. Next up, we have the Morkinaut. The Morkinaut, I I like the Morkinaut. I'll put it in the B tier. I'm going to put this like just behind the Death Roller. Morkinauts, when I've used them, especially with Bad Moons shooting twice and the uh, Weird Boys give them vision in the smoke, they can, uh, they can do some stuff. Morkinauts are very shooty. They have great guns. And they can really blast a lot of things off the enemy's table. Now... Once again, I have to keep reiterating, but in this meta, because everything does so much damage and Morkinauts don't benefit from obscuring terrain, you're going to have a lot of games where this thing is just going to get blasted off the table and not do much, which is a shame because it's a cool model. Lore-wise, it's awesome. And the cool thing is that you can actually give it a custom force field. And Morkinauts... I actually think I mixed up the Morkinaut and the Gorkinaut, but Morkinauts overall just feel like they're just a little bit too much for what they do. I think if at least they got the advantage of obscuring terrain and they got a points reduction, then they could be much more viable in competitive play. But as of now, we do see them in competitive lists, but not too many of them. It seems like there are certain players that know how to get a lot out of their Morkinauts and some players who just kind of just stay away from Morkinauts because they are a, quite a quite a lot of money to invest into your points like 340 points especially when you don't get obscuring and you can just have your enemy wrap it off the table it becomes a, 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 a lot of a risk for little reward in terms of the Morkana for that reason I put it at the B tier now we got the uh, Gorkana and I would actually put it behind in the B tier 
And Gorkonaut, I think, suffers from the same problem as the Morkonaut. Gorkonaut is a more melee-focused version of the Morkonaut. I think it has utility being in the Teleporta, but now you're spending way more CP in the Teleporta. And Gorkonaut, I just think it's just a little too expensive for what it does. If it was reduced in points or it could get benefit from obscuring terrain, I think it would be seen more... Again, like I said, it has a similar problem with the Morkonaut where it just feels a little too expensive. And if you're going like second, I feel like you're just going to get it blasted off the table. So for those reasons, I would put the Gorkonaut also in the B tier. So that's it for my tier list, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. I'm gunning to get this tier list done before the new Oral Codex, which they now announced will be in July. I'll be very excited to also do analysis of the Or Codex. I'm super excited for what Games Workshop is giving all of my war bosses and my boys for the Or Codex. Again, this is uh, my opinion. I don't really play a lot of Warhammer competitively, but I do enjoy the game and the competitive aspect of it. If you have something that you think you would change or you think is wrong with this list, definitely put your thoughts below. Hey, if you have tips or tricks that you want to share with everybody else, also put that in the description down below. Again, it's my opinion. I'm open to everyone's input. And I also encourage players to try new units because if you don't try new units, if we don't experiment with things, we'll never know what could actually be viable. Just like the Mega Dread, which is recently saw a huge surge in popularity in the competitive scene, but before was not used at all. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this content, please like, subscribe. As always, you guys stay safe out there. Stay rolling those dice. Until next time, peace out.